the guy. When we first started this series of tire history, we went into different brands, good brands, and well, I'd say old school brands like BF Goodrich, Michelin, everything in between that just had this big heritage behind it. We went into the history of Toyo, Nitto, and now we're going into the history of one of those brands that has become so insanely popular in the last five or 10 years. On this episode of Tire History, we're gonna cover none other than Nankang. Nan Nankang. Nankang, we're just gonna call it Nankang. Nankang Tire History. So don't forget to subscribe, check out the links below, and check out Fitment industries.com if you get bored as we talk about Nankang Tires. Now, Nankang Tires was founded in 1940 in Taiwan, and they were one of the first tire companies in Taiwan. In fact, their name is actually an O'Day to where the company was originally founded and where one of their two major production plants is still in existence producing tires to this day. A lot of their initial growth came from their Hissenfung plant, which if you want to try saying three times fast, you can definitely give it a best shot. A lot of their growth came from that. Over time, what they really just got involved in was making good, affordable tires. Now, they have a lot of accreditation, accreditation, accomplishments, whatever, what have you, that are cool, but not like our cool. Like they did things, they introduced tires that were like the first of their kind from Taiwan, but they're tractor tires and they're just not very exciting. So we're not, we're gonna, we're just gonna skip over that. We are gonna say that they do claim that they were the first ones to introduce the radial tire, which if you guys didn't watch the BF Goodrich, that actually is a little bit of a controversial thing on if they actually did or not, and that's entirely we're just not gonna get into it because we say that that's not true then Nanking is gonna call us and be like yo take your video down but you you said it in in your stuff and they're gonna be like yeah but we're loaded and we're gonna say okay we'll take the video down so we're just not gonna get into the discussion about who came first you guys can make that up on your own but what you do need to know is a lot of Nanking's initial success came from that plant and then afterwards their success and cooperation with getting involved with the Yokohama name now Yokohama is a name that's been around for quite a long time and because of the cooperation and partnership with Yokohama they essentially blew up even more so in the late 70s. Now Nankang was originally a state-operated company that specialized in military rubber supplies. So they essentially weren't really, they were like the DMV pretty much. They were just another department of something for Taiwan. And they really never really privatized established business until the late 70s when they were like, hey, can we the why are we the department of motor vehicles when we can be like our own car dealership? And that's a terrible analogy to make about a tire company, but in short, that's essentially what they did, and they broke off from just being a state-owned military op. They officially changed their name to the Nankang Tire Corporation in 1959, and with their partnership of Yokohama behind them, they had everything that they would need to essentially get bigger and better. From there, they implemented plants in China in the late 70s, and they implemented different plants in Taiwan, and they just essentially got established in a lot of international trade. Because of the Yokohama partnership that they had and the fact that they essentially went privatized in 1996, Nankang essentially became more and more and more an individualistic person that they needed to take help from no man because they could just do whatever they want and they did they started producing tires and everything for everything they possibly could and while they did make stuff for airplanes back in the early 70s just like everybody else and they made different bus tires so then they made airplane tires they did do it in a way that allowed people to essentially get signed on board with the Nankang brand and if you guys didn't know there's a lot more money in commercial partnership than there is with selling $600 tires to your normal Joe and Schmo and what ended up happening is because of those established partnerships especially in the late 70s and 80s Nankang King essentially started to get some money under their belt and they began to grow and they never really featured any sort of cutbacks or setbacks like a lot of other tire brands do. You see with tire brands, this is what happens. They start the business, they get super popular, a lot of people start running them, they start making lots of tires and then they're like, well, why don't we just go sell everything everywhere? So they get involved in rubber grommets and different sort of widgets, anything that they could possibly produce. Next thing you know, they're in over their head in inventory and they've made absolutely no money because their headquarters are spread all throughout the world and it's just a massive mess. And companies have to resize, cut back, set back, and have to start all over like Nitto. And then you have companies that have to start back from the ground and go back up. That happens with almost every single tire brand. Every tire brand we talk about has always had an issue like that, and Nankang really hasn't. They've always been involved in making things that just work. Nankang essentially has become 99% commercial tire business and do nothing more than produce tires. Even though they can do other stuff, they really just don't because they don't need to. They pride themselves on using raw material instead of getting it from other people in places 
Texas, and they're one of the first people to coin the studless and stud winter tire, as well as the radial tire, which I've already said once, but I'm gonna say it again because you guys like facts. You can do whatever you want with that. It really doesn't do anything for us. I know what you really wanna know is about the NS20, and we're gonna get to that in just a little bit. Just hold up. And if you want any other fun facts, in 1974, they developed the first steel belted tire. Two years after, they developed the first fuselage tire for the T28 coach plane. They developed 70 series radial tires in 1977. They developed another tire in 1979, a fuselage for a T33 coach plane. Do you really care? Maybe if you're on, you know, who wants to be a millionaire and you're looking for a question to answer. But for the most part, what you do need to know is Nanking got involved, they got established, and now here they are in the Americas. Now, Nanking is a brand that isn't super popular, I would say, in the grand scheme of things. However, in current day and age, especially with the people that we talk to, Nanking has become insanely popular. The Nanking NS20 is probably by far one of the most popular tires that we sell to you guys for wheels and tires and things like that. And the question comes into is why has Nanking hit a market at a price point that they have for so long and how do they do it? And then of course, are the tires, you know, any good? What you do have to know is that they produce tires for Geostar, Milestar, and a whole bunch of other companies that also sell tires under a different name. They do private label their tires if you want to. The biggest thing that happens with Nankang is that they're in a very peculiar spot. So if you look at different brands, you have brands like Atsu, Nankang, Nitto, Toyo, say Michelin, BF Goodrich, and then all of them come together and they focus on different markets. Is Nankang involved in motorsports like Toyo or Nitto are? No. Is Nankang involved in absolutely nothing like Atsu is? Probably not. But is Atsu an absolute behemoth of a company? Yeah, they are. Nankang is just like, they're just kind of there. Their sole purpose is just to make, it's like going to McDonald's, you can get a dollar menu burger, or they have like a two for fiver deal, or you can get a, like a whole meal. Like the two for fiver, that's Nankang. They're there. Like they're budget affordable, they work, but they're not crazy when it comes to different research and development. Now they do have R&D put into their tires, but nothing in compared to what other brands do to essentially mark up a lot of the pricing on their tires. You're not gonna see Nankang put next to a Proxy AAA-R. You're not gonna see Nankang get put next to a Pilot Sport 4S. You're not gonna see them compared to those brands because that's not what they specialize in, especially the Nankang NS20, which is the iconic tire right now for the Nankang brand, especially when it comes to passenger cars, is pretty much meant to be a tire that just works, that survives, and that just gets the job done for a pretty cheap price. Does that mean Nankang tires are bad? Not necessarily. Nankangs are what you would get when you talk about bang for your buck. Nankang really is that brand. And that's where you get into a lot of people arguing about the brand, saying that they're just a runoff brand and that they're no good. And by definition, that would be no. Nankang has history in Taiwan as one of the first tire companies to exist over there. They've developed tons of the first tire, the first studless tire, the first stud tire, the first radial tire, if you want to consider that, in the tire business. And for the most part, they aren't a super huge company. So they are doing pretty well for themselves considering just how involved they are in China, America, and Taiwan. And of course, they also produce tires for other countries. For the most part, that doesn't really matter because in the United States of America, we really only think about, you know, ourselves, which is, you know, it's not a big deal. But if you guys are looking for Nankang tires and you want to know if they're good, what it really comes down to is what kind of tire you're buying and what you're putting it on. Because at the end of the day, Nankang tires are a bang for buck tire. I don't know what this is. So is Nankang chocked full of history? Not really, no. But do they have something going for them? Absolutely. Why they're so popular? I have absolutely no idea, but I'm assuming it has everything to do with the fact that they come in a 245-40 series and they're not that expensive and everybody loves running eight and a half wides on their FRS and BRZ. With that being said, let us know what you guys think about Nankang in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see next from Wheel History, Tire History, all that sort of stuff. And check out FitmentIndustries.com if you're looking for Nankang tires or wheels, tire suspension, airlift, Tane, Eibach, ST, KW, Acura, lug nuts. I don't know. We just have stuff. Feel free to check it out and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.